Title, The Shadow People As we emerged from the dense foliage, the campsite came into view. The sun was setting, casting a warm orange glow over the clearing. The sound of chirping crickets and rustling leaves filled the air, and I couldn't help but feel a sense of excitement wash over me. This was going to be an epic camping trip. My friends, Rachel, Mike, Emily, and Jake, were all seasoned campers like myself. We had planned this trip for months, poring over maps and guides to find the perfect spot. And this was it, a remote forest campsite nestled deep in the heart of the woods. We quickly set up our tents, laughing and chatting as we worked. The smell of S. Mori's wafted through the air, enticing us to gather around the fire pit. As we settled in for the night, we shared stories and jokes, our bond growing stronger with each passing minute. But as we settled into our sleeping bags, strange noises began to creep in. At first, it was just a faint rustling in the bushes outside our tent. Then, an unexplained creaking echoed through the trees. We dismissed it as mere paranoia, chalking it up to wild animals or wind-blown branches. As we drifted off to sleep, I couldn't shake off the feeling that something was watching us from just beyond the edge of our campsite. But I pushed it aside, attributing it to my overactive imagination. Little did I know, this was just the beginning. We woke up early, feeling refreshed and rejuvenated after a good night's sleep. The sun was shining brightly overhead, casting a warm glow over the campsite. We spent the morning hiking through the forest, exploring the trails and marveling at the beauty of nature. As we walked, the silence was broken only by the rustling of leaves and snapping of twigs. We chatted and laughed, enjoying each other's company as we navigated the winding path. But as we rounded a bend, we caught sight of something that made our hearts skip a beat. At first, we thought it was just a figure in the distance, but as we got closer, we realized it was much more, and much less. The figure was shrouded in darkness, its shape indistinct and amorphous. It seemed to be made of nothing more than shadows and darkness itself. We froze, unsure of what to do. The figure didn't seem to be moving or making any noise, but it was undeniable that it was there. We exchanged nervous glances, our minds racing with possibilities. Is that, is that a person? Rachel whispered, her voice trembling. I don't know, Mike replied, his voice equally shaky. It looks like it's made of darkness. We stood there for what felt like an eternity, unsure of what to do. Then, without warning, the figure vanished into thin air. We breathed a collective sigh of relief, laughing nervously as we tried to process what had just happened. Whoa, that was weird, Emily said, her eyes wide with excitement. Yeah, I've never seen anything like that, Jake agreed. As we continued our hike, we couldn't shake off the feeling that we had just seen something truly unusual. We tried to brush it off as a hallucination or a trick of the light, but deep down, we knew that something strange was going on. And as we made our way back to the campsite, we couldn't help but wonder what other secrets the forest held. As we settled back into our campsite, we couldn't help but talk about what we had just seen. The figure had left us all feeling uneasy and uncertain. I don't know what that was, Rachel said her voice still shaking slightly. But I don't want to see it again. Me neither, Mike agreed. Let's just focus on enjoying the rest of our trip. But as we sat around the campfire, trying to make sense of what had happened, we couldn't shake off the feeling that something was watching us from just beyond the edge of our campsite. It was as if the darkness itself had followed us back to our campsite. I tried to tell myself it was just my imagination playing tricks on me, but deep down, I knew that something was amiss. And as I looked around at my friends, I couldn't help but wonder if they were feeling the same way. Little did I know, this was just the beginning of our descent into madness. As the night wore on, the atmosphere around the campsite grew more tense. We tried to make small talk, 
but it was clear that everyone's minds were elsewhere. We kept looking over our shoulders, expecting to see that figure lurking in the shadows. I tried to focus on the stars above, but even the celestial beauty of the night sky couldn't calm my racing thoughts. The darkness seemed to be seeping into our minds, infecting us with paranoia and fear. As we settled in for the night, we began to hear strange noises. At first, it was just the wind rustling through the trees, but then it sounded like whispers. Faint, muffled whispers that seemed to be coming from all around us. We exchanged nervous glances, unsure of what to do. The wind died down, and the silence was oppressive. We were all trapped in our own little worlds of fear and uncertainty. I tried to convince myself it was just my imagination, but deep down, I knew that something was wrong. The darkness seemed to be closing in around us, suffocating us with its presence. As we drifted off to sleep, I couldn't shake off the feeling that we were being watched. The shadows seemed to be moving, twisting, and contorting into grotesque shapes. And when I woke up again, the darkness was still there. It had seeped into our minds, infecting us with madness and terror. We stumbled through the next few days, trying to make sense of what was happening. We argued and snapped at each other, unsure of who was seeing what or who was hallucinating. But one thing was clear, we were trapped in a living nightmare. The forest was slowly driving us mad, and we didn't know how to escape. As we sat around the campfire one evening, staring into the flames, I realized that we were all lost. Lost in our own minds, lost in the forest. And then, I saw it. The figure from before. It was standing just beyond the edge of our campsite, watching us with an unblinking gaze. I knew then that we were doomed. Doomed to roam these woods forever, trapped in a living hell of madness and terror. As I stared into the flames, I knew that we had reached the end of the road. The darkness had consumed us, and we were no longer the same people. We were shells of our former selves, trapped in a never-ending nightmare. I looked around at my friends, and I saw the same desperation in their eyes. We knew that we had to get out of there, but we didn't know how. As we sat in stunned silence, I heard a faint whisper in my ear. It's time to leave. I turned to see who was speaking, but there was no one there. The voice seemed to be coming from all around us, echoing off the trees. I looked at my friends, and they seemed to be hearing it too. We exchanged glances, and without a word, we knew what we had to do. We gathered our belongings and began to make our way back to civilization. But as we walked, I realized that we were being herded towards something. The darkness seemed to be leading us somewhere, and I didn't know where. As we walked, the whispers grew louder. They became a constant chant, echoing in our minds. Get out while you still can. We pushed through the underbrush, fighting against the thick foliage. We stumbled and fell, but we kept going. We had to get out of there. And then, I saw it. A clearing up ahead. A place where the darkness seemed to be thinning. We stumbled into the clearing, gasping for air. And that's when we saw it. A figure standing in the center of the clearing. It was tall and imposing, its face twisted into a grotesque grin. We froze in terror, unsure of what to do. The figure began to speak, its voice like a rusty gate creaking in the wind. Welcome, it said. You've made it just in time. And with that, everything went black. When I came to, I was lying on the ground, surrounded by my friends. We were all staring up at the sky our eyes wide with terror. And then, I saw it. The figure was standing over us, its grin growing wider. We scrambled to our feet, desperate to get away from it. But as we ran, I realized that we were trapped. The darkness had closed in around us, and we were its prisoners. The last thing I saw was the figure's face, twisted into a grotesque grin. 
And then, everything went black again. When I came to, I was lying in a hospital bed, surrounded by beeping machines and sterile white walls. I was disoriented and confused, with no memory of how I got there. As I slowly regained my senses, I saw my friends sitting beside me, their faces etched with concern. They were talking to me, but I couldn't make out what they were saying. I tried to sit up, but a wave of pain washed over me. I fell back onto the pillow, gasping for breath. One of the machines started beeping more rapidly, and a nurse rushed into the room. Don't try to move, she said. You're going to be okay. I looked at my friends, and they were all staring at me with a mix of fear and pity. I knew that something was wrong. As the nurse tended to me, I caught snippets of conversation. Something about a group of friends who had gone into the woods and never returned. Something about a mysterious figure that had been seen in the area. I tried to remember what had happened, but my memories were fragmented and unclear. I remembered the forest, the darkness, the whispers. But everything after that was a blur. As the days passed, my memories slowly returned. I recalled the figure, the clearing, and the feeling of being trapped in the darkness. But there was one thing that didn't add up. The figure. It was too, human. Too twisted and grotesque to be anything other than a person. And then it hit me. The figure wasn't a creature at all. It was one of us. One of our friends who had been driven mad by the darkness. I felt a chill run down my spine as I realized the truth. We had been terrorized by one of our own. As I lay in the hospital bed, I couldn't help but wonder how many more of our friends were still out there, trapped in the darkness. And how many more would be consumed by its madness before we could rescue them. The darkness had claimed us all, but it would never truly claim us again. We would fight back, no matter what it took. As I lay in the hospital bed, I knew that I had to get out of there. I couldn't just sit back and wait for the darkness to claim more of our friends. I had to act. I managed to sit up, despite the pain and the machines beeping around me. My friends were shocked and worried, but they helped me get out of bed. We made our way to the hospital's emergency room, where we found a group of doctors and nurses trying to treat the others. They were all traumatized, but they were still alive. We knew that we had to act fast. We couldn't let the darkness consume them too. We gathered a team of medical professionals and set out to rescue the others. We scoured the forest, searching for any sign of our friends. As we searched, we found more and more evidence of the darkness's power. We found abandoned campsites, overgrown with vines and moss. We found abandoned cars, covered in rust and debris. But we also found signs of hope. We found small notes, scrawled on rocks and trees. Notes that said things like don't give up and you're not alone. We followed these signs, driven by a sense of determination and hope. And finally, we found them. They were huddled together, their eyes wide with fear. They were trapped in a clearing, surrounded by darkness. We rushed towards them, shouting their names and trying to calm them down. It took us hours, but slowly but surely, they began to come back to us. We got them out of there, one by one. We got them back to the hospital, where they received medical treatment and therapy. It wasn't easy. It took months, maybe even years, for them to fully recover from their ordeal. But slowly but surely, they started to heal. And as they healed, we started to rebuild. We started to rebuild our lives, our relationships, and our sense of purpose. We never forgot what happened in those woods. We never forgot the darkness that had consumed us. But we learned to live with it, to face it head on. And in the end, we emerged stronger and more resilient than ever before. The darkness never truly left us. 
It's still out there, lurking in the shadows. But we know that we can face it. We know that we can overcome it. We've learned to be vigilant, to be prepared for anything that might come our way. And we've learned to rely on each other, to support each other through the darkest of times. The story of our journey is a reminder that even in the darkest of places, there is always hope. And it's a reminder that even in the face of overwhelming terror, we can find a way to overcome it. And so, we'll continue to face whatever comes our way, armed with courage and determination. And we'll always remember that no matter what darkness may come our way, we'll never be alone.